You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. This is the Thunder Quack Podcast. The official podcast of Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Where anything can happen. So strap yourselves in and hold on to your butts. It's Thunderquack time! Hello and welcome back to the Thunderquack podcast, the official podcast of Thunderquack.com, which you can get early every Tuesday over at Patreon.com slash Thunderquack, just like our Patreon producers, Brian Murowski and JJ Samuel do. Or you can wait and get it late every Friday on podcast services across the galaxy. I am one of your hosts, Michael Cohen. And I'm your other host, Amanda Conkin. And I, I, here we are. It's another Monday night. We're going to record a podcast. We're going to talk about some some stuff I, I guess yes i'm very excited because i was given the option to have either this week off or next week off because apparently mike is very dedicated and awesome at getting podcasts all the time and i chose to be here this week because next week is thanksgiving and i'm very excited to like go on a little like a mini road trip mm. so for me i know that thunder quack won't be off next week but i will be off next week so this is a very exciting like sort of like the end of the group you've you've had our blissful voices in your ears for many consecutive weeks and you get a break from me next week, so. Yeah, uh, so I'll be doing an episode next week, but uh, only for Patreon supporters. So, oh, whoa! Uh, yeah, it's so the the it'll be the bonus episode next week, nice. uh, and that's uh, yeah. If you uh, if you pledge at the five dollar level or above, you'll get that. So that's what's replacing the ad free tier that we used to have. Um, oh, cause sweet. now we don't have ads anymore. So Yay! We're, I'm we're... so pleased. I hate ads so much and I yeah. felt dirty and gross having ads on something that I was part of. Although I appreciated you cause you did so much hard work to get that set up. So I, I take it back, but also, well, I'm let sorry. me tell you something. Cause, cause yeah. I, I, this, this, this might change your tune as to like now the direction that we're going in. Cause I keep having conflicting feelings about it. Ooh. I, but I have no problem sharing this with everybody, especially since we're not doing it anymore. But uh, I, I, I'm just bringing it up here. Um, to date, we have made two hundred and thirty-eight dollars and twenty-one cents off of advertising our very modest podcast. Um, and those ads were obnoxious, uh, and uh, and had nothing to do with the podcast, and they weren't really useful to our listeners. So, like, I'm happy to see them go as well. But, um, but that extra revenue was nice. <laughs> It was good, but uh, that's okay. We're 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 moving on to a new platform now, and uh, I, it's actually going to streamline things and simplify them on the back end for those of us who actually upload podcasts uh, and that sort of thing. So it, it'll it'll we're we're, we're going to be paying for it. Like before with with Spreaker, the the deal that I made with them was that we wouldn't have to pay for the podcast for the hosting, um, but we would have ads on our stuff. Um, and then they decided that they wanted to have ads every 10 minutes and, uh, or not no, ads every 10 think, minutes, but like an ad for every 10 minutes of podcast. So, that's so much, it's so uh, much. yeah. And a mandatory two ads at the pre-roll wow. and, and then they preferred two ads at the post roll as well. So that right there gets you 40 minutes of podcasting. So if you go over 40 minutes, then you have to have another ad. And for every 10 minutes after that 40, you have to have an ad. So, so like in their in their minds, oh, that's not big, a big deal because 60 minutes, you would have the two at the beginning, the two at the end, and the two in the middle. Nobody does a one-hour podcast anymore. Like, like there are very few podcasts that I listen to that are, that are under 60 minutes. Um, and we never go under 60 minutes. We're usually two hours and, and somehow I've never quite been able to figure this out, but they have like an optimized button. And when you hit that, you end up with like somewhere around like 16 ads in an episode. And it was like, as of October 31st, it was going to be mandatory. So if you didn't put those extra ads in, they were just going to insert them randomly into the episode. So I was just like, no. And I have no problem talking about it like here on the podcast because I think that it was a really shady thing that they did. 
uh, that they, that they, cause they recruited us. They came to us and said, Hey, we want you, uh, on Spreaker prime. And it was like, Oh, cool. Well, this sounds great. This is awesome. Like, uh, this is a really good thing, really positive. And then, and then, yeah, a couple like about a month and a half ago, they're like, by the way, we're going to enforce this now. And it's like, yep, that sounds about right. Get a bunch of like, it was obviously they had a campaign to get a whole bunch of people on because the alternative, if we didn't want to have ads and I never got this far in the conversation, but I know that this was around the bend. The alternative would have been, well, you don't have to be part of Spreaker Prime. You can just pay for it. And then you don't have to move your podcast and you can see, still keep getting revenue and blah, blah, blah. And it would have been, we still would have been making a profit even if we were uh, paying for, for Spreaker. I, uh, I, but, but like at what kind of at what cost, right? And I feel <laughs> it, like it's, it yeah, didn't it's feel like, right. Once you, and once you go through that, you're kind of like, well, I feel gross now and let's just move on. Plus like we, it's, we, we did okay before Spreaker and I feel like we'll go back to. Yeah. That'll yeah. Well, and, and yeah. so the other thing is that we're moving away from Libsyn now, like Libsyn, I don't have a problem with Libsyn as a company. I think they're fine. I, I think that they pay way more attention to the podcasts that meet the requirements for their advertising, which is a much higher threshold. Um, I think an individual podcast has to have like 10,000 downloads per episode. We're not there. <laughs> We've never been there with any of the podcasts, mm-hmm. even, um, uh, quiver at its height was probably hitting around 7,000 downloads an episode. Um, at, like w- it's within a certain range, right? right? Episodes of quiver tend to cap off. Uh, I'd have to look it now. Cause I, I don't, I don't know. It's probably trailed off, but I think at its height, like, so season two, season three, I uh, were like, they would, they would sort of trail off around like the, the, the like 15,000 mark. We have like over a million downloads of Quiver. I, I it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Cool. It's awesome. Like we're okay. Like wh- the Thunderquack. I think most of you guys know is not like the biggest podcast network in the world. Even though I've been podcasting since two thousand and eight. And you wish it were long it before. Be. Oh, I wish. In, in I your wish. Heart. Every in day your heart. I wake up and I wish that I was doing this full time and not uh, not having to go to work. But. Um, uh, yeah, because that that's all obviously always been the dream, but I uh, but also it that's a crazy dream because uh, everybody who does have those podcast networks, there I you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who started out casually podcasting the way that that we did, and has turned that into like a a, a six figure salary business slash job, right? Um, everybody who's really, really, really successful at podcasting has transitioned from something else. So either it's about they, audiences and all sorts yeah, of stuff like they've brought an audience yeah. with them. Like, and, and I, I like either you look at the guys from kind of funny, they came from IGN, like Greg Miller was the face of IGN for the last couple of years that he was there. Um, so he brings IGN's the biggest video game website on the internet, like in the world. So he brought millions of eyeballs with him um to to kind of funny when they started that and then a certain chunk of those myself included supported them on patreon to the point where like they're a very successful business um we've we're like from the ground up and we have under 50 supporters on patreon i think it's it's not we don't we're not like a crazy 50 of the greatest supporters on but patreon. yeah but i mean like and that's we the love. thing is that we have we have an awesome audience um, and our our devoted listeners are are the best, and many of them have been with us since either day one of Frontlines, uh, the Clone Wars podcast, or day one of Quiver, right? And so, like with Quiver, that's that's nine years now, right? Oh, um, we've been doing this for yeah, because it's the beginning of October, so it's been nine yeah. years since we started. Crazy. Um, so I guess next year will be ten years. That's kind of crazy to think. Um, is that right? That's awesome. Yeah, I think you're right because it was eight years of eight years of quiver. Yeah, Um, Yeah. and I, I, yeah, I mean, like with with uh, with frontlines, it's been twelve years, right? So, um, yeah, like those those individuals, uh, several of whom are part of the network, (laughs) right? Like Kyle and Tim are part of the network. Matt is part of the network. Like they're they're uh, they're as integral to it as we are. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, 
it's a yeah. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's like it's a, when you look at it, you have to measure success and that sort of thing. But uh, but to go back to Libsyn, like they they have this massive threshold in order before they'll even consider you for ads. Um, and I mean, like for it's 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 not really their choice. It's it's and that's the difference is that like like the thing with Spreaker is that it was always kind of like oh this is too good to be true. This is way too good to be true. Um, and it ended up being too good to be true because the ads were garbage. It was like, hey, do you want insurance? And it's like our listeners are, do not want to buy insurance off of a podcast ad. <laughs> Nobody wants to buy insurance off of a podcast ad, ad right? Um, and and I mean, like, I don't know that it's much better to just hear another ad for me undies or uh, or Blue Apron or you know the million and a half. Um, I I ads that you hear for like five companies on every podcast that you listen to uh you know stamps.com maybe i uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> i don't listen to enough podcasts you don't yeah, i don't think i've ever seen um but at least those would be a little bit more relevant and a little bit more and like, i mean like if we were doing live ad reads i'd, I'd feel more comfortable but uh, i don't know curtis and i talked about it when all of this started and it was like well maybe we'll we'll pursue other things for advertising because that's a type of patreon if you want us to instead just read something for your business oh yeah you can be a direct patron by Uh, also advertising for your business yeah we had that tier kind of on on like when it when we when we started and nobody really bit other than andy uh andy did it at at the tier to 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 be on your own episode like to or to like have a call with us or whatever um and I think he's still got a couple of those sitting in the bank that he's that he wants to use. But right on. I I yeah, because he supported us at that tier for a really long time. Um, but I, uh, uh, but nobody really nobody really bit on that stuff. But if you do have something that you want to advertise to our to our modest audience of a, of a couple thousand listeners, then uh, by all means, <laughs> you let can, us know. You, can you let have us know. our email. Uh, thunderquacknetwork at gmail That's the email. So, I uh, yeah, but right. but uh, Libsyn was expensive, and it wasn't really it wasn't really my choice to go with Libsyn. We were with a a long time ago before we started Quiver. We were with a, a company called Podango. Um, and then Podango went out of business. I wonder why their name is so great. Uh, they went out of business, and when they did, they sold all their clients to, or well, I, I guess I mean either way, it's the same thing. Uh, Libsyn bought all of their clients, um, and uh, uh, so we got like automatically ported over there. And uh, and this is stuff that I had forgotten because we've been doing this for so long, and it wasn't until I had to start the migration process for the second time in one year that I was like. This all seems really familiar. That's right. We had to do this in like, I think in like 2009 or 2010. Um, but I, I, yeah. So now we're, we're moving over to, to, to a service called Pinecast that I actually, I'm, I'm really happy with so far. Um, they haven't pulled the rug out from underneath me just yet. So, uh, <laughs> but one cool thing about Pinecast is that, uh, A, it's, it's, I did a lot of shopping around this time because I don't want to move again. <laughs> I, I get, can I just, I do, it's a time to shout out to Mike for doing all of the grunt work on this podcast. So thank yeah. you, Mike, for um, doing this. Share your knowledge. Not just this podcast, but I mean like the administrative the, stuff yeah. for all of the podcasts yeah. on the network. Um, but uh, I, it, yeah, it's it's significantly cheaper than Libsyn. Um, although, although if anybody out there is, does have a podcast on Libsyn, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. They prorate all of their, their subscription fees. So what that means is that if you start subscribe, if you, if you start paying for it in the middle of the month, you only have to pay from the 15th to the 30th, right? So you pay half. So if it's $7, you're only paying three fifty. Um, you can yeah. increase and decrease your, your your plan as much as you want, whenever you want. And so what we would do is rather than just set it at $40 a month, which is about how much space we would need every month for the podcast, we would increase it and decrease it as we needed it. And what that would mean is that we would pay less than the $40 like by the end of the month. So we saved a lot of money doing that, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of 
uh, uh, labor. It was it was a lot of time lost on having to go in and do that, having uploaded an episode, and then it going, hey, you're actually out of space, and then going, shoot, I gotta increase the the quota and then re-upload it. Um, do you want to know why there's why you're in charge? Well, aside from all the obvious reasons why you're in charge of this yeah. stuff, is like the monitoring of what you do monthly. I literally spent. Friday night dealing with finances. I called a credit card company at like two o'clock in the morning. They were open. It was awesome. <laughs> credit cards are a business. Apparently they'll help you any time of day. Yeah. But also Amazon has been charging me for Amazon Prime for the States and Canada every month for the last year and a half. And I did not know. So <laughs> <laughs> it takes a certain amount of I okay. remember one one month you like charged me with like checking on Libsyn and it was like this huge responsibility that I yeah. had to like make sure that it was good. Um, Sorry, I but uh, I mean like all you you say all of that, and, but then um, this is more so out of just like a lack of time to to sort the problem out. When we started on Patreon, the upload limit I think was like a hundred megabytes or something like that, and a hundred megabytes for a podcast is not enough <laughs> yeah. so so we got a subscription to soundcloud which is i think is like 16 dollars a month canadian um so that we could upload the longer episodes uh there because it was for the it was for the the um the round tables right which right, were usually right, about yeah. two hours so we would upload them to 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 soundcloud and then link them like upload them as private files on soundcloud and then link them on Patreon. So we have like, I don't know, there's probably around 15 or 16 uh, of those legacy episodes that are sitting on SoundCloud. Um, s since we did that, Patreon has upped it to 250 megabytes. It can handle almost any episode that we do. Um, certainly all of those older ones can now go on, on directly on Patreon and I can replace those uh, anytime. Uh, we are still paying that $16 a month every month because I just haven't been able to like go in and download those 16 episodes and, 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 uh, and move them over. Um, and it's like, it's one of those things that's been on my list for probably about two years now that doesn't get done. So, so as, as much as, as I, I, yeah, I mean like it, it's one of those things where every month when I get charged that $16, like I get mad at myself. I'm like, there's another $16 <laughs> that we didn't need to spend. Um, but, but that's okay. It's uh, it. I mean, SoundCloud's a good service. They, they, they deserve to be paid for what what they do, but we don't need to be using it anymore. But in any case, once I get everything sorted out, which I I've sort of set a deadline for myself for the end of the month, for the end of October, at least to get everything off of Spreaker for sure, before they start doing crazy stuff. And we're almost done with them. Um, but to get everything off of Libsyn as well, it will be will be. Uh, uh, paying. I mean, like I've told you guys, it's Pinecast. You can look at the pricing yourselves. The most that you pay on Pinecast is fifty five dollars US a month, um, and that that was like one show on Libsyn. <laughs> Especially like like it, when you think about like um, Rebel Cells when we were running at full capacity when Resistance and, we were doing Resistance and. Um, uh, forces of destiny at the same time, both on the same feed. I, uh, I, we were, we were probably paying like 60 a month just for that one show. I, uh, I, uh, and so, yeah, I mean like it's it, running a podcast network is, is actually, it's probably a lot like having multiple kids. Cause there's a lot of people out there who have one podcast. So I have to deal with this stuff for one show and it's enough work for one show. But to deal with a network where, like, I got to coordinate with with uh, Ryan and Chloe and get them uh, I sorted out, and uh, with all the Riverdale stuff. Thankfully, we get this reprieve of like I don't know when that show comes back. <laughs> I don't think it's coming back anytime <laughs> right. soon. Yeah, so like fair. we're like but but they're in the process. I've got uh, Tim, Kyle, and Paul with Saga Continues where like they have. T I, I felt so bad. Tim was almost done moving everything over to Spreaker. He had like 10 episodes left of like a hundred and something episodes. Uh, and, uh, and he's got to do it all over again with Pinecast. Oh no. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just kind of is what it is, but I have, okay. I have, I, I started counting it. I think I, I think I did. 
I got pretty far with it where we have like 170 episodes of Quiver, uh, 200 and some odd episodes of Rebel Cells, 138 of Frontlines. So what's the math on that? So let's say just say 200 for Rebel Cells. So 200, so 338 plus 170. Uh, 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 do that math for me. <laughs> Was that like 500 uh, yeah, episodes? Okay, sure. We're at like yes. 500 episodes. And then on top of that, there's also Pull Box Podcast, which is 73 episodes long. And then we had like 30 something episodes of uh, Cartoon Afternoon to add on top of that. So that's another 100. So like 600. Uh, and then th- Thunder Quack's already done. Front Lines, uh, sorry, uh, Faster More Intense is already done because there weren't that many. So, and they the were the weirdest ones that were... podcast we've ever done, Mike. We're doing a podcast about yeah, our podcast. About our podcast. But the thing is, is that like, it, it, um, and I've always said, I've said from the beginning because w- this isn't, it's not our money. It's the patrons' money, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> if they're curious where their money's going, <laughs> this is, this is where it's going. This is your quarterly check-in. Of yeah, this is this is com. this is your annual. I <laughs> usually actually, uh, when we first started on Patreon, every January I would do like an annual thing. But um, well, this is it. The first it's couple just, of years, it's just, it's just way way late. Yeah. Um, so this is your the, your check-in. See how we're doing. Yeah, yeah. But but it's awesome. So so. We'll have all that revenue from Spreaker, which is just kind of from nowhere. We haven't been spending much on Libsyn because we've just been paying the $7 a month until we get the shows off of there. So we're giving them, like, uh, which is, like, the minimum, right? I, I, man, I don't even know how many shows are over there. So, like, pro- probably, like, f- somewhere around $50 a month. Um, so we won't be paying them that anymore soon, and we'll be on Pinecast. We'll be giving them 50 bucks a month. Uh, and and with the the revenue that comes in, we're at almost two hundred dollars a month on Patreon. Um, we'll be we'll be in a good spot when this is all said and done. Um, and 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 we 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 have money in the bank right now, which is the a first for Thunderquack because for a long time I've talked about it like we were like a zero Averaging. sum sort of thing. Like it was like it was like right on the line every month. Um, and, and I was always happy with that, but, but what this means is it, we're still, what I said in January when we talked about moving to Spreaker is still true. We, we are now at a point where we can afford to, to invest in equipment or, um, I'll, I'll tell you guys, one of the things that I've already done is, is that I, uh, I, uh, contracted a composer, Christy Carew to do, new theme music for um for all of our star wars podcasts because she she did the theme for uh for uh what the force podcast which is one of my favorite star wars podcasts and i love their opening music and she actually sent me the first draft of the faster more intense theme which will be debuting when we start our mandalorian season two uh uh recaps right when when that drops in november well (gasps) do i get to sign up for one of those yeah yeah for sure yeah um and I, uh, I, she sent me the first draft of 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 the faster, more intense theme, and I mean, like, incredible, incredible. And she's so talented. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. But you are gonna have to wait to hear it. Um, I can I just say one of my favorite things about like people recognizing how economies work, in that like by people being patrons of our c- creativity. Yeah. We get to be patrons of other people's creativity yeah, and like totally. foster that sort of circle, and I just think that that's really cool. And that's it, how, it, it, like it, how it, it works. It felt right? really good to connect with Christy and just say like, like to say to her like, "Hey, I really love what you did for What the Force. It's it's awesome. I would love for you to do that for us." Like, I uh, is then, she a Canadian composer or is she from others? She's countries? actually from North Vancouver. <laughs> <gasps> what, dude? Yeah. You have no idea how hard it is to find female composers from BC. Yeah, what? she's from North Vancouver. She lives in in L.A. now, I think. Um, I, I, I I'm pretty sure she's in California, but I, I but she has like Canadian citizenship. Yeah, but she, uh, yeah, I, I mean, she's so. she's from Canada. So, um, <gasps> oh. yeah, I, we we talked about that a little while ago. Actually, she'll be on 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 faster, more intense. Nice. Um, uh, probably, I, like I'm hoping that I can get her on like the week before, I uh, I. Uh, 
we start the Mando stuff so that we can actually like talk about the music and the process of, of like how oh. she composed it. And that'll be kind of be the way that they, they that we debut that. But uh, we were like it just randomly through through social media somebody another a mutual friend of ours on twitter said something about vancouver and i was like oh cool i'm from vancouver uh, mm-hmm. and then she's like i'm also from vancouver and it's oh, like no way nice it was very cool because we'd been uh like she was already working on the music at that point and, and then we find out like it's the small galaxy right i i so that funny. is that um is. but yeah i no, i mean like it is it's difficult to to find uh, female composers in the industry to begin with. I, I, it's one of the it's one of the points for Canadian content. Yeah, you have to have yeah. Canadian composers. So. so it was it was awesome to like like when when I started listening to What the Force heard her work and then like she gets uh, like they they shouted out at the end of every episode right as part of the credits of the episode and I uh, and I was like well I'm gonna look her up and 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 see if she'll do some stuff for us. And uh, actually, it's Spreaker's fault. I'll get. I'll, uh-huh. I'll give them credit on this. A little while ago, they had, they had sent out a thing that was like, you can't have any copyrighted content on your podcast. And I was like, well, right. we have all sorts of copyrighted content on our <laughs> podcast because the Star Wars ones, like it's 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 like the Lucasfilm and Disney look the other way, right? Like they they because you're creating fan content, they go like, yeah, whatever. It's fan can, content. It's yeah. like the purpose of it is to drive people towards their content. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. So the so like the quote unquote money that they would be losing from us using music that is technic that technically belongs to them is is made up for in spades by the by the goodwill that that's generated just off of fans talking about the product, right? It's it's not worth it for them to come after anybody. Right. But I understand from Spreaker's point of view, you're monetizing the like content it, it, Spreaker gets into tricky territory because they're the ones with the contract with the advertisers. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. so I was like, okay, well let's get away from using the copyrighted music. And I had also started listening to all these other star Wars podcasts, sort of the, the f- first half of the year. Right. You can hear all about this stuff on faster, more intense talk about me finding this whole community and whatever. But, um, it was also sort of like like I started listening to What the Force, and I was like, well, they have their own theme, and I would like as much as I love the music that we choose to use for the sh- for the three shows that we have. It would also be awesome to have our own Star Wars themes, right? Like our own recognizable, like like I can this this is a testament to Christy and how how great of a composer she is. Is like I could hum the the What the Force theme. And like every time I listen to the podcast, like it's it's like in my head for like half a day. Um, and then she she's composed this one for us for Faster, More Intense. And it's like I'm not as familiar with it yet because I've only listened to it a couple of times. But but I know that like it'll get it'll get there for our listeners where it's like this 30 seconds of of music is going to be um, like that's like our brand. Right. And that that was that idea was really exciting to me. So to be able to go to her and 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 contract her to to compose some music for us we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for patreon supporters and that's it's uh it's exactly what you said of like they're supporting our creativity and our like that money can then go to support another creative and it we get to have the feather in our cap of um supporting a female composer which is a big deal especially when it turns out she's a canadian so it's like I, uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of good all around. Um, and, uh, I, uh, and then on top of it, she's incredibly talented and the music is so good. So, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 w- I really want to share it, but it's like in, in process, like it's, it's totally not a finished piece. Like she, she sort of sent me like the sketch of it to, mm-hmm. to be like, like, is this what you were thinking? Because we right. kind of yeah, discussed. Yeah. Yeah. We discussed, like, three separate tones for the three different shows. For Faster, More Intense, Rebel Cells, and Saga Continues. Nice. So um, so it was like, okay, like, these are what these three are going to sound like sort of thing. Cool. Very exciting. Um, I, but, uh, yeah, it's so good. Like, like it's... Nice. It, it, it's good enough to put on an episode now, but I know that what 
the finished finished product is going to be is going to be so much better so i don't want to like i don't want to ruin it for everybody else i want everybody else to hear like (laughs) the totally finished mixed polished version of it but i listened to it and i let crystal listen to it because i was so excited i was like listen to this listen and she was like that sounds like actual star wars music and i was like yeah christy is super good um but she's like a she's a huge star wars fan as well so like she's a john john williams aficionado so um yeah uh yeah it's really exciting all of that circle back around to pinecast one of the reasons why i really like going with pinecast is that uh, uh, i don't remember what the number is but a but a portion of what we pay them every month goes to uh, uh i and i can't remember the 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 fund or whatever but it goes to like a there's they're called pinecast because it goes to like a like an eco-friendly foundation that's like Ooh. planting trees or something like that so it's like it it also does a positive thing so you guys' money is going through to this positive thing so it's uh yeah all all this it's all good stuff and by the end of the year Everything will be cool. Everything will be be moved to where it needs to be, and uh, and we can go into twenty twenty one fresh, and uh, and just focusing on the content instead of me having to focus on all this. If I could put the time that I'm putting into this migration into building new websites or content or you know whatever, uh, man, we could produce so much stuff. Or I could just you know have some free time again, but uh, that's okay. It's uh, it's October. I don't have free time in October because I'm also doing Inktober. So uh, I could hear you. Oh, that's what I was gonna bring up on the I think on the post show or the pre show, whatever we call it. I could hear you drawing, and I was gonna oh, bring it up. Sketching? And that was yeah. remember I was like there was something else I was gonna talk about, and that was what it was. I was gonna bring up your sketching because I could hear you sketching as you were going, and I like just, yeah. I thought it was a opportunity for you to talk about your sketching i have to i have like i'm talking about i have to manage my time very efficiently right now so i was just basically like wireframing out uh i'm like on my sketches like my pencil sketches for these i'm like a week ahead um, nice which is really nice because i'm not usually this i don't usually have it quite this together but with two kids i have to and is this your own prompts like you're doing the star wars prompts that you like talked yeah. about but you're doing yeah like, so we we talked awesome. about that last week on the yeah. on the uncut episode so some of the audience probably didn't hear it but but yeah i mean like i was i wasn't sure what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to still do a drawing challenge and i'm still hashtagging inktober um on on the post um, cause that is what I'm doing, but instead of using the official Inktober prompts, I'm doing all star Wars stuff. Um, and, uh, and today was, it was a perfect, uh, I, 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 case study. I don't know. Like, I, I, uh, it was, is absolutely validating my thoughts of like, when I draw Raylo stuff, I get way more attention than if I draw Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Um, and so today I drew Ray with her lightsaber and and posted it. And I put the Raylo hashtag in it, and it's gotten way more attention than anything else I've done in the other four days of Inktober. What false advertising? There was only Ray in the Raylo. I I well, you don't know what she's thinking about. She's Fine. meditating. That's fair. I did watch the last uh, Jedi yeah. yesterday because I just needed something to do in the morning and it made me feel good <laughs> and then because I, I yeah oh i feel like it's because literally last week you talked about raylo i started following raylo on instagram yeah. and then my brain was thinking about raylo all week that's how that worked hey supplemental advertising and then i watched the last jedi because it was nice to watch it i did i watched it while i did a crossword and thought about how nice it is to not have children basically and just that like that like that is how i i basically spent the entire weekend doing crosswords and then i watched the last jedi and i'm kind of like i it was a thing i had a, i was hanging out with a friend this is a quality podcast just for everybody this this week's episode um but on saturday night i hung out with a friend and we were talking and i was like oh do whatever brings you joy and it was there was like this sad moment where she was like i don't know I feel like I do things because I think they should bring me joy. And I'm like, okay, that's, <sighs> that's interesting. That's rough. 
Yeah, but because for me, I'm like, I do that every day. I just do stuff that brings me joy. And I mean, granted, I don't do much, but it was a genuinely awesome weekend to say. Anyways, you can continue talking about your Raylo hashtags in Inktober, but I just thought no, that was, that was the end of it. It's just, it's just yeah. if I if I hashtag if I draw Ray or or Ben yeah. Solo and I hashtag Raylo, it gets way more attention. Yeah, all the love. But yeah. but as I said before, I I Finpo is the one that really gets people going. Nice. I, yeah. I, if, if I look at 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 my, the insights on my um on my Instagram account. Uh, it's still, uh, number one is the, is the one of, of Ben and Ray, uh, in their like Hoth type outfits where I've got, I drew, I drew Ben Solo, the redeemed Kylo Ren, uh, in, I I like a thermal outfit that is, that is, it's Leia's outfit, but on a man from, from Empire Strikes Back, right? Like with the, like with the puffy vest. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I just drew that on him, on his very <laughs> tall, wide body, uh, and uh, and I think that I I think that I struck a chord. I think that I that I hit on something that people like. Is this um, on your? Is this your? Is this on your? Um, arc. Angel Archangel, Wolf? Archangel Wolf. Yeah, A R K A N G E L W U L. I'm trying to scroll through this. Was it a while ago that you posted uh, this? Oh yeah, it was back in July, July twentieth. Um, hey, you, you do a lot of art. Look at all this art. I've been drawing a lot lately, but it's what this is what we what I said last week on the uncut is that like I started drawing this Raylo stuff because I was I was I was frustrated with Rise of Skywalker, right? And and right. wanted I needed closure on that story that the movie didn't give me, so I started creating my own content, which is where fanfic comes from, right? Uh, in a lot of instances. Um, so I started doing this and then I, uh, and, and it like blew up. Like all of a sudden I started getting way more likes than, than I normally would. So I kept going with it and it was like that, it was that Finpo one that really did it. Like that one's got a lot of attention. Um, which for people who don't know, Finpo is Finn. And po okay, for people who don't know, you should probably stop listening to the podcast right now because who, yeah, that's fair. who even, what even? Also, though, Poe. So let's just talk about the last Jedi for a moment, and then we can yeah. talk about actually. Yeah. Well, I have I have things I actually want to talk about on the podcast, but just yeah. for like one moment, Poe is the worst, and I almost use the f word right there. Like that, he basically. How does Holdo not just shoot him in the face during <laughs> that movie? Where you're like, this is the reason why she didn't tell people her plan is because somebody leaked it and then compromised the mission. Like, holy hell, dude. You're the reason that, oh my gosh. And it just, the whole time I was watching, I was like, you know what? I mean, because, you know, for the first, like, five minutes of that movie, yeah. he's the best part of it. But then he quickly becomes not the best part of it. And but, the best part but, of it becomes Ben Solo's as we've As we've talked about previously i think he's also the only reason that any of them make it as far as they do so as much as not following leia's orders was i uh, this is uh, poe is han right like poe is han via a different route and especially since the rise of skywalker and they make him a former spice runner he is very much han solo um only like leia tries to reform him as a mother instead of as a, a romantic partner. So <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and she does a much better job. I, but like you have to, you really have to think of it that way that like Poe is, Poe is the same. If you, if you like Han in the movie solo, then you, you kind of also have to like Poe Dameron cause they're the same guy, just at sort of yeah, different, in different you circumstances. Like, you have to like Han in Solo. Yeah, you don't like Han in I'm, the movie Solo. Well, you I, I, you have to like him because he's Han Solo, but like. Yeah, but but so here's the thing: is that is that they they Poe just needs to distract them long enough for to to finish the evacuation so that they can take off, right? I'm not arguing that he didn't do a really good job in the beginning of the movie. It's the rest of the movie that he's a terrible. But, but this individual. is the thing: is that is that it's not you like. 
I'm I'm gonna I'm not I don't this is gonna sound like I'm attacking you I'm not this is this is but this is kind of where we're at I think a lot of us mentally and where cancel culture kind of comes out of is that we're all so so quick to throw the baby out with the bathwater we don't look at circumstance we don't look at a sequence of events we look at the one thing that somebody did wrong and we decide that that now they're going to be written off right i'm not saying that that's what you're doing but i'm saying that like it like that's it that's very close to 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 the mentality because when you look at it and you look at the sequence of events it's a lot of really bad circumstances all happening really really close to each other that everybody is just reacting to none of them are making solid choices holdo is also awful she's a terrible commander in 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 the last Jedi, I don't know about like before that. Obviously, if she's an admiral uh, or is she admiral or vice yeah, admiral, admiral Holdo, but oh, vice admiral Holdo. I think she's introduced as vice admiral, but yeah. in any case, I think I think she was vice admiral and got promoted to admiral because everybody got blown up at the beginning of the movie. So when she takes over, she's admiral. But in any case, she obviously has a very good career up until that point. But they are in a dire circumstance with no good way out. Um, and she she sees Poe as the reason why her bombers have been destroyed, right? But Because he was the reason that her bombers were destroyed. Well, okay, yes and no. He pressed an attack, but it wasn't it wasn't that the TIE fighters cut them to shreds. It was it was totally circumstantial and it was totally a fluke. It was the force, right? Because I uh, if you go back to I mean like I can play it in my head. The 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 TIE fighter gets the destroyed. Of the tie. Yeah, that, it that, smashes yeah. into one of the, the bombers just after they armed all of the, the warheads. Yeah. And that sets off a chain reaction because these bombers are all flying too close to one another. So there were problems with the plan, but they were problems that like were hard to foresee because it was this accident that sets off a chain reaction that leaves us with one bomber, right? But all of that is irrelevant because if they didn't take out the Dreadnought, they had no idea that the First Order had hyperspace tracking, but they, the Dreadnought would have come out of hyperspace, armed its cannons, and blown the Radis to smithereens right then and there. And it would have been done. Like, the Resistance would have been done. It would have been over. The like movie finished. So Poe trusts his gut and presses the attack to the point where he switches off the comm and, and completely... Like, I mean... Under normal circumstances, he should have been court-martialed. But Leia doesn't do that. She doesn't, she doesn't push it that far because she knows, she also kind of knows, not that Poe is right, but that like Poe is trusting his instincts and that's what makes him a good pilot. It's what makes him a good commander, but it, but that's not who she needs him to be anymore. Right? Like she knows that her time is coming to a close and she has, she's doing succession planning and she's upset with him in that moment because she needs to teach him a lesson of I'm going to demote you for like the next two weeks. Right. And then we're going to have a conversation. You're going to have learned from this, this, and like, you, like you, it'll have humbled you a little bit. Uh, well, like she probably would have put him through some other stuff because they think when they're on the other side of that and she demotes him, she thinks they're in the clear. We made it. We escaped. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now we just got to find a new base. And when we find a new base, I'm going to make you clean the bathrooms for a week. <laughs> and then you can be commander Poe Dameron again. Right. Like, um, but but she gets incapacitated and that leaves Poe in this weird limbo of like, well, my commanding officer is now for all intents and purposes dead. And here comes this other person who's taking over, who doesn't know anything about me other than what has just happened. Right. And thinks that she knows me. So she makes a bunch of snap judgments about him. He makes a bunch of. Uh, snap judgments about her he also has a problem with women in authority which i mean like metatextual if you read the other stuff stems back to his relationship with his mom uh as it as it always does uh or and, and so like leia knew how to handle it holdo didn't and and so poe he reacts to a lot of stuff but she also she also pushed his buttons 
and and also like didn't trust she holdo came to the realization near the end they uh like why leia keeps this guy around right and 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 it was the mutiny that did it like she like in the mutiny she goes like hmm all right okay i get it i see it i see what leia sees in this guy and what she says to leia is like i like him right um but I mean, Poe does have growing up to do. He does. He did. He did have a lot of maturing to do, and he does have some, some, some reconciling to do with with uh, uh, women in his life, and particularly women in authority. And and I can relate to that, and it's one of the reasons why I love him so much as a character. I. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, so it, he makes some bad choices, but Poe is not awful. Poe is a little bit dumb at times in that movie and then he's left in this place of like he is he is the leader of the resistance at the end of the last jedi and then we get to the rise of skywalker and it turns out that jj abrams and chris terrio didn't watch the last jedi they've just (laughs) never seen the movie they just they just never watched it because he's right back to being the character that he was at the end of the force awakens so um like he learned he only by virtue of yes. the bad writing in, in Rise of Skywalker does he become uh, a character who doesn't learn anything in The Last Jedi. And it's very frustrating for someone who was as bought into that character's journey as I was, obviously. But everybody was well. dealt with that way because uh, like Ben and Finn and Ray and then Rose is just written out of the story entirely. Yeah. There's like, a lot. There's so many, so many. Issues. Lando goes from being a character who shows up in Empire to being a general and leading the, the Death Star attack in Return of the Jedi. Rose goes to um, being Leia's babysitter and having to look at some schematics. Mm-hmm. Not really doing anything. It's a bummer. It, it's very upsetting. The Rise of Skywalker is full of problems. Yes. Anyways. But that's not even what I want to talk about on this podcast. What I was do you want to talk like about? regaling you with the things. I Okay, so we should talk about no- Enola Holmes, but maybe we can just talk about yeah. that later. Because what I actually want to talk about is Shit's Creek right now. Have you have you finished watching or have you started watching the show at all? I'm just like, oh, you yeah, know, no, we like, finished Shit's Creek you, forever ago. Oh, and I like just haven't. Okay. So I just, I'm, I'm on season four. We, so here's it. I understand this because you, you are watching it on Netflix. Yes. Yeah. So you waited until, so we're in Canada. We're Canadians. Yes. It's a CBC program. You don't have to pay to watch Shit's Creek <laughs> or Kim's Convenience. Yes. They're on CBC Gem, which is an app. I mean, like you have the CBC, you could have been able yeah, yeah. to, you should have been able to record them, but, yeah, yeah. but, or they're probably on demand as well through Telus yeah. or whatever. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean like it, it, even if you don't have cable, if you, you can just download the CBC gem app, which is what we did. Yeah. Um, My tax and, dollar is hard at work. I love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I uh, no, I mean like it, look, I've been hard on the CBC in, in past years because I felt that I feel like the CRTC and, and some of the, the regulations hinder our productions. Um, they are also the only thing that allows Canadian productions to exist. Yeah. So um, it's, 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 it's more to do with the bureaucracy yeah. than with the, than with like the actual, like the, the spirit of it. I am behind. Like, I think that we should yeah. definitely promote Canadian content. Oh, I think that we just like, we, they we don't actually of, promote it. They yeah. just make it. And that's yeah. the core difference. I think. Right and there, there tends to the be things. a, they, there have been some great Canadian productions in the last, 15 years but nobody sees them because they just kind of didn't go anywhere um yeah. but somehow not somehow i mean schitt's creek is one of the best comedy television shows of all time proven okay. by the fact that it swept the emmys just, but right? here's my problem with it yeah i had tried to watch it for okay. so many years yeah. and i just couldn't because i was like who are these terrible people <laughs> the show i have a problem with eugene levy like majority of the time like i get that he's a canadian icon but also he like just something about him rubs me the wrong way the character like i wasn't into any of the characters it i wasn't finding it funny it took me years and then they won the emmys and my my phone kept being like here are cute moments from schitt's creek maybe you want to watch these like little moments and I started yeah. like watching these little bits and pieces and then what I found was I figured out who like the love stories were. 
And then I started shipping really hard. And <laughs> then I started being like, well, I'll just get to the point where David meets... Um, I do. Can I like? Is it spoilers to talk about who? And I won't. I won't say. David meets his guy, right? No, and it's I not spoilers. It's not... They've been together for like two, like three of the seasons. Like it's no. Yeah, but it it doesn't happen until season three. So, but here's the thing. The reason I kept watching is because I knew that eventually David was going to meet Patrick, and yeah. like I just knew that there was somebody coming who looked really like. Like, I was like, this seems like a cute relationship and I'm here for it. But I was, every episode I was watching, I was like waiting. I was like, well, what's going to happen? Like, and so that though made me start like following, following these characters. And Alexis, who like, basically what had happened is I watched a, like their first meetings, like, like little clip of like, um, David and Patrick and then Alexis and Ted. And then when Alexis and Ted first get together, you're like, what? Why do I care at all about this relationship? At all. And it's just kind of funny. And that's the same actor. Like, Ted is the same actor that plays the giant idiot, I think, in a Holistic Detective Agency. Dirk Gently. Like, I'm pretty sure he's the, like, dude with the machine gun. Anyways, I feel like... I've not similar. watched Dirk <gasps> Gently. So. You haven't watched We've Dirk talked Gently? about this. We've oh, talked about devastating. this before. Devastating. Devastating. Um, anyways, I, it was very like, and anyways, now watching where I was like waiting and watching for, I kept hearing on the internet that it was a big deal and that Dan Levy is like changing the face of television and I'm excited for this relationship and I'll watch it. And what happened in the background is that I started caring about Alexis and her feelings and she became a real person. And the show then started getting really funny and really sweet. And I think I cried in one of the recent episodes and I'm just like so here for it. And I love these characters and somebody posted on their on their Facebook the other day, like, uh, does Shit's Creek get any better? Because right now I hate these characters and everything. And I just, like, got so passionate where I was like, yes, it gets better. Stick with the show. And I haven't even finished it yet. And I just, like, the relationship between Patrick and, and um, David is so cute. Like, it's so cute. And you're just like, this is just, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> what to say about it aside from the fact that like people should give it a shot but also that you don't have to like there are parts that I just don't watch I kind of fast forward through them because sometimes I just can't stand it when people are being cringy and there's a few like I quite like Moira and Johnny are great but there's a lot of scenes that I can't watch where I'm like this this narrative arc that they're putting you on in this episode is so awkward and I just don't want to pay attention to it but anyways that's what I just so basically I had to apologize because I know that you told me to watch the Comey Rule. Yeah. And I, instead of doing that, I stayed up way too late last night watching Shit's Creek. Like, I stayed up so late, and then I went to bed, and then I was falling asleep, and I was like, is it worth it for me to watch another hour of this show and feel gross tomorrow? And I chose yes. And then I woke up this morning being like, it's okay. I have an hour over lunch in which I can watch the Comey Rule and be a good podcaster to, to Mike. And instead, stuff exploded at work and I had a terrible day. And then I just wanted to watch more Shit's Creek at the end of the day. And I was like, that's it. I just, why would I do work for this podcast when I could watch something I love for this podcast? And I just I, got okay. so excited. But the, Okay, but this is, this is the thing. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm glad that you're watching Shit's Creek. You're so late to the party. Like the part, the party ended, <laughs> and it's just like there's one streamer hanging from the ceiling, and and just confetti all over the floor, yep. and one guy sweeping up, and you have walked in, and you're just, you're just walking around, and and like literally what you've just described is like you're not eating any one thing. You're just eating little pieces off of all of the plates <laughs> that are sitting around, and you're like this. This probably was a really nice party. Um, and it was. It was fantastic. It was great. Uh, I'm it's still a, living it. It's no. an awesome show. And anybody who hasn't seen it yet is dumb and should feel bad about themselves. <laughs> I, I, no, it's, a, yes, the characters are a little bit unlikable in the beginning. And sometimes, look, I, I have to grit my teeth and get through the Roland stuff because oh, I just God, hate I him just so hate much. I just hate him. Ugh, and I like Chris Elliott. So... I think that he's very funny, but that character, the the I think the thing with Roland that drove me nuts is that over the course of, it's five seasons, right? Six. Six. I got six so seasons. excited. I thought it was only five, but it's six. So seasons. over the course I'm of the so six excited. seasons, everybody grows and learns and becomes a better person, except for Roland. He stays exactly the same. Crystal just started rewatching it. 
Uh, it's so funny because she probably like, started rewatching it when you started watching it <laughs> probably, for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, we're watching the first episode and Roland shows up and it was like, wow. I mean, like, I have to give Chris Elliott props for it's it's very difficult to keep a character that consistent over six years yeah that's, that's fair. like like if you think about any show any sitcom sort of show like that like there's an evolution i mean like look at the office S- steve carell goes from a very very unlikable michael scott in the first I think it's like the first six episodes right, and then yeah, they, yeah. they pivot pretty quickly, but like by the end of that first season, he's not even close to the same character as he is in the first episode. Right, um, yeah. and that, and, and not by virtue of like, he grew and learned things as they were like, no, no, we need to change this character because this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, not for American audiences. It's, it's, if you're into the, the British office, then you understand why he was the way that he was at the beginning. But um, but yeah, I, I, but with Roland, yeah, he stays exactly the same. He doesn't learn anything. He doesn't become any better. And by the, by the last episode, you're like, you are still rolling shit. Like you are still absolutely this character. Um, and his name is absolutely on purpose. <laughs> I uh, didn't and, get uh, that until this very moment when you said it out loud and I was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, I get it. I uh, yeah, I get it. man. Ugh, yeah, he's that character is very difficult. It's but, so upsetting. Yeah. But he is there as an obstacle, right? He's the conflict, um, and 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 for a lot of the series, he he actually drives a lot of that conflict. I uh, I but um, but it, like and and without that conflict, you wouldn't have Johnny in particular wouldn't go on the journey that he does to become yeah. the character that he does. Right. Yeah. So, um, cause by the end of it, like, uh, I don't I, I'm hard pressed to think of a, of a comedy that has a better ending than Shit's Creek to me because I want to don't ruin the ending. I'm not going to, I just, it. I just, it's, it's very satisfying. It's just very nice. satisfying. I, and I'm getting that sense and I'm very excited. Like there's just little things that they've been doing throughout that I'm like, these people are making choices that make me like yeah. intrigued with them did, as did like, you, characters. Did you watch The Office? I did, yes. So like The Office should have ended with Pam and Jim's wedding. Probably, that, yeah. That should have been yeah. the end of the series. They should that should have been it. Like as far as I'm concerned, that is where it ends because everything from that point forward, they just start. That's when they start generating conflict, like contrived stories in order to, and then especially like once Michael Scott, like once Steve Carell leaves, it it's not worth. It's not watching the same. No, yeah. Um, there were some there were some nice moments afterwards, but for the most part, it was not worth it. Um, yeah, there were definitely two off ramps that they chose not to take, and they kept going to the point that they kind of make you hate Jim by the end of the series, which is yeah, awful. which is like how it's can awful. you do that to that character? Yeah, it's really upsetting. Um, it's a it's an interesting story to tell, but I don't know why they needed to do it with that character who was beloved and turn him into a villain. I yeah. uh, uh, anyways, I this doesn't need to become a hit piece on the office, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, like if, if you can kind of imagine where you were at when that episode happens in the office, that is ve- like, that would have been a perfect place to just like leave these characters. Mm-hmm. Like, here's these two, the will they, won't they of these two characters that the, that the show kind of revolves around and we resolve that and everybody else is happy for them and everybody else has their stuff going on. And, and you know that like life goes on. It's not right, the yeah. end of the story. It's not like Arrow where it's like, well, let's just kill the guy and then the series can be done. <laughs> um, it's 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 like it, like you know that these characters are still out there doing their thing. That Parks and Rec did a really good job with the end of their series. Like, don't ruin that one for me either. I haven't seen the end of that either. Uh, well, just, I just to the point. All I want to say that is just to the point where like they could do like their COVID thing where they've come back and done. Like they oh, did like, like a, life, right, cause they did like on. a video yeah. call episode, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. To be like, these characters are still out there. They're still living their lives. It's... That makes me excited to finish Parks and Rec so that I can watch that. Um, 
It's not a good example of what you're talking about because I get what you're talking about and I really want to finish the Parks and Rec. But Veep also ends very well. Have you seen Veep? Did you? I watch haven't Veep? watched Veep. I could not. I I had a really hard time getting into that one, but uh, I know that it's good. I it's, have, but it I, also aware is it's so good. cringy. It's so yeah. cringy. But the perfect, like the perfect part about it is that the last episode just ends so perfectly. Mm. Like it's such a perfect culmination of everything they worked to on the show. And I just well, think that that was really. Thrilled. I think one of the biggest things about that, like I, I, I remember when the show was ending and people asked like, why are you ending? And, and Julia Louis-Dreyfus was like, look, it just got, it, it just, when we started, we were making fun of this and then the world changed and now it's not a satire anymore. Now it's yeah. the news. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like, they were like, there's no jokes left in this yeah. because, and, and to me, it's like, I think, I think, I think by the time that I went to get into it, I think that's kind of where we were at. And I was like, I don't need this. I don't, I don't, I mean, it's a I real, it's this. a real bummer. It's a, yeah. there's like a, there's I would a say actually in Canada, in Canada, we were already there. Right. Cause, cause if you think about that time, that was when Harper was in charge, right? This is before Trudeau got elected what? so oh yeah i guess so hey so we were we were not certainly not in as bad a state as america but we were in a similar situation of like what is happening to our country we need to do something about this and thankfully we managed to you know get the campaigns for strategic voting out there and everybody got their acts together and we got rid of the conservative government and let's hope that we can keep it that way because now they want to do all sorts now they really want to be america jr and it's oh it's so upsetting it's so upsetting um but uh yeah so i that was probably but there's like that's probably why i didn't get into it there's a character in veep that just never gets not terrible but they evolve how his terribleness affects everybody around him in ways that is super satisfying. Like he becomes is it, you're is kind it of Tony like, Hale's character? <laughs> I no. Tony I Hale. actually I Wait. like Tony Hale's character. Tony Hale's character isn't annoying. He's like you're kinda of like, oh this poor puppy dog. He's he's, he's the only one like he's the only actor other than no, it's, Drake, his, so that the, I No, it's I, I mean, if people watch watch uh, Veep, you know Jonah. It's Jonah's character. Who like it's just a thing that he's a sort of irredeemable just jerk, but also like an idiot. Like, who doesn't know what he's doing. And it just... He just gets more and more power as the show goes on. And never is... Like, he gets it because he is useless. And it's just, like, so cringy to... It's just so well done. Like, they just... Like, that character particularly is just such... Anyways, I just... I highly recommend Veep if people are, like... I mean, it, it is depressing. Because, as you say, it's it's hard to watch something that you're living. But... Julia Louis Dreyfus is great, and also I really love the girl. It's the girl from My Girl, right? Who I love, um, Anna something. I forget what her last name is, but she's um, one of the main characters, and I love, and I think she's so great. Like her characters, she plays a character named Amy, and it's, it's fabulous. Like it's just like the way that they treat women on the show is just so it's so interesting. Like all the women are treated so terribly by other women as well, and it's just in an it's just an interesting deconstruction of like politics. So, yes, so many awesome shows. Watched It's Creek. That was basically all I wanted to talk about today because I'm right in the... I don't know, Mike. One of the things I love so much about TV is just sometimes I just... I love it and I get so ingrained in a story that it just makes my life happy. And that is like I'm literally just like in the middle of a binge right now because I was watching just like episodes of Schitt's Creek for the last couple weeks like mm -hmm. here and there and then it went full-fledged yesterday where the afternoon I like went grocery shopping and then I came back and then I basically just watched like seven hours in a row like it was intense that must be nice so, it is I mean yes <laughs> there's a lot of things that I'm very pleased about my life just being able to do whatever I want to do that's good but, you know, you have love and children in your life, so. Yeah. No, they're wonderful. I'm living no. I'm living vicariously <laughs> through fake television characters. Like, gay fake television characters. <laughs> that love story is more interesting than, like, anything in my life. Ah, uh, well, I mean, like, I think that, that that love story is 
more genuine than a lot of oh, stuff yeah. on TV. So It's so cute. I just watched the episode where David dances and sings a song, and it's so cute. And I just love it so much, and they're just so cute. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, next week, I, okay, you have to watch the Comey Roll for next week. I, I am not going to be here next week. But oh, yeah, that's right. Well, I okay, will, so you have two weeks. I will, and I actually have started it. I have, again, best of intentions, road to hell and all that stuff. But, like, I put it on so that I can go and be, like, instead of having to search for it every time, I can go and be, like, continue watching. So it's, like, queued up and ready for me to watch. So as soon as I've finished watching all of Shit's Creek, I will watch the Comey Rule. Okay, you're going to like it. Uh, I know. It seems uh, interesting, like, from the first little yeah. bit. I know that I will. So thank um, you for that, Rick. Yeah, and and yeah, I mean, I think that we'll have a lot of political stuff to talk about when you're back. Ugh, I don't want yeah, to. But so upsetting. Um, man, let's just really quickly before we end. Oh Trump... no, I was so pleased with us not having time no, to move on. No, I just want to. I just want to say that that th- it's going to be like a couple sentences. I we talked about Trump being garbage a couple weeks ago, I uh, and I uh, uh, all of that still holds true. But if, if you needed any more convincing, all you got to do is look at the videos of him from today, uh, having uh, left the hospital way sooner than he should, putting lots of people in danger, very clearly still being sick with COVID. Um, and I, you know, I really thought that he was faking. I thought that it was a load of, a load of uh, 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 rolling shit. Um, <laughs> but I uh, see it wasn't a swear because it's the last name, the yeah, S-C-H-I-T-T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I love Canadian television for having different <laughs> roles about swearing than American television because Americans are having so much troubles with this. And I'm like, they say the F word continuously. This is a Canadian and it, broadcaster. And, <laughs> like, and on the CBC, it's not bleeped. Yeah. like it's And it would air at like 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. It's because like, Canada is awesome. We're the Canada, best country. We're, it's really awesome in terms of like just rules of our, our own ratings. And I just think yeah. that that's really great because, you yeah. know, it's just words. It's um, words. Anyways. But yeah, I if you needed any more convincing, I hope that you don't need any more convincing. But if you did, um, yeah, I mean, like Trump's behavior over the last week, I uh, not it hasn't even been a week. It's like five days, I uh, with this with him getting COVID and giving it to everybody in the White House and a lot of people being very sick as a result of the carelessness and uh, callous nature of him and his administration. I uh, please, please, please vote for Joe Biden. Just do it. It's just, it's just, 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 just vote you know, for the guy. because a vote for Jim Biden is a vote for Canada because Jim Carrey played Joe Biden on SNL skit. So basically. Yeah. You're, it's basically, yeah. you're basically voting for a Canadian. There you go. <laughs> Wait, does go. that help or does that make it worse? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I mean, like, a, I think from a, a Canadian perspective, it sounds like a good thing. I think from an American perspective, they'd be like, oh, I don't want it. Oh, I want my guns. And it's like, okay. I'm very excited for the day that Meghan Markle runs for president and the uh, the, the colonists take over again. So, <laughs> I, Hey, I I have already said on Twitter that I'm going to I'm gonna talk try talking to the queen and see what we can do about getting let's get at least a couple of these states back into into the colonies <laughs> back into the commonwealth i mean that's fair i don't that's want fair. all of america there's a bunch of it that that they can keep but like let's just take the west coast let's we've been just, trying to take the west coast forever i honestly feel like I, i've said this a million times i honestly feel like british columbia should just separate from canada and and uh washington cascadia. oregon yeah cascadia they, for life man we would we would be the greatest country in the world we would be the most powerful country in the world because we would own all of the movies and tv yeah. and and disneyland the superior theme park i mm-hmm. uh, also like i'm sorry for all the people at disneyland that are losing their jobs what a bummer yeah yeah that is yeah that's that's uh that's tough news corporate it's, corporate craziness yeah. like i hope the world gets some semblance of anyways stay safe stay well yeah I know well that hey that vote hurt. for joe biden because if you yeah. want things to go back to normal faster i'm not saying that he's gonna fix it all overnight okay but, i mean have you there, heard that joe biden a vote for joe biden is a vote for a cure for coronavirus though like I, if I ever, can we start spreading that rule? That rule? No? <laughs> should we just? Are you saying like let's lie? Like let's do what they do? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm fine with that. I didn't lie. I'm... No, I said, did you hear? I didn't say it. I said, did you hear? Ah, I see. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? That's what people do on the internet. That's how fake yeah. news spreads. Yeah, that is how fake news spreads. I uh, awesome. No on responsibility. Note, no responsibility. On yeah. that note, <laughs> uh, that's it. That's it. I'll be back next week for everybody on Patreon. I uh, I uh, probably all by myself. I don't know. We'll see. I will Maybe be eating I'll, turkey yes in it. a in a small town in Alberta. I'm very excited to go to a small town in Alberta. It's I don't know. It, there's just something like very rural about small Alberta towns. I mean, not small towns uh, in general. The, but. There's the rural <laughs> thing is that they're literally rural. That's <laughs> yeah, the yeah. rural thing. They have outdoor cats. I'm very excited. Oh so, boy. <laughs> I have an outdoor cat. We just don't let him go outside. That's why he's so I mean, mad at everybody. Fair. That's fair. Okay. Right. Well, have a fun, have a fun podcast next. Week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands and be kind to one another. Follow the Thunder Quack Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook by searching the Thunder Quack Podcast. You can support us in three ways. First, by heading to the podcast service of your choice and leaving a rating and review. Second, by going to store.thunderquack.com to pick up some merch from your favorite podcasts. And last but not least, by heading to patreon.com slash thunderquack to kick in with your monthly pledge of support and get cool rewards like early access, ad-free episodes, and extended episodes. The Thunderquack Podcast is the official podcast of Thunderquack.com. Head to Thunderquack.com to discover more 